So this news just got to us. We have enough to get you some of the basics. The Titan V is a $3,000 NVIDIA graphics card. It is not meant for gamers. It is a scientific workload and computational card, including abilities for deep learning and machine learning data sets where you need a lot of memory. This has 12 gigabytes of HBM2, and you also need some specialized hardware, like tensor cores, which were detailed when the Volta architecture was shown at GTC this year. Before that, this video is brought to you by Thermal Grizzly, makers of the Conductonaut liquid metal that we recently used to drop 20 degrees off of our temperatures. Thermal Grizzly also makes traditional thermal compounds for use on top of the IHS, like Cryonaut and Hydronaut pastes. Learn more at the link below. As for core specs, the card is a 250 watt TDP. It uses a Volta GV100 GPU and is powered by a single eight pin and single six pin power connector. This is cooled by the standard NVIDIA heatsink and fan using a vapor chamber and the cooler is pretty much at its limits in terms of cooling capabilities at this TDP. As for the other specs, it's got 5120 CUDA cores, 640 tensor cores alongside those, and the clock on the CUDA cores is 1200 megahertz base or 1455 megahertz boost. So we're a bit lower than something like a 1080 Ti, but targeting a much different market where things are perhaps less frequency intensive than, for example, games. They want more cores instead. The card also hosts 320 TMUs or texture map units, and we've got a block diagram from the original Volta announcement that we can show. This is from earlier this year, the V100. And you can just see the, how packed in the SMs are on each of the GPCs. Uh, but this is somewhat standard. If we drill down deeper, though, and look at the SM layout, this is also from the Volta 100 announcement, you'll see how the SMs are architected as opposed to the usual layout. Typically, in something like a gaming card, you don't see the heavy saturation of FP64, INT, FP32, and tensor cores all in one. You basically just see FP32 for something like gaming with maybe a little bit of FP64 on the side, if it's one of the older architectures, especially when there was more focus on double precision. One of the major examples of the differences between this and one of the modern gaming architectures like Pascal is that the FP32 saturation here is only 64 units for the entire SM. So one SM gives you 64 units of FP32, similar to what we've seen on some other scientific architectures, whereas the 1080 Ti, for example, runs 128 units that would be on the same SM. So the SM architecture is much different on a scientific card than it is on a gaming card. You really wouldn't have, obviously, a great gaming experience on a $3,000 scientific card. But this is the first step to Volta coming out to the mainstream and that's probably gonna be next year. As for other information that might interest you, this reference board has a 16 phase VRM. It's unlikely that Nvidia will produce or allow partner models of this card, but the reference board has plenty of phases to work with. The Titan V is also equipped with the same combined L1 and shared memory as seen on GV100 architectures earlier announced. And that means that the developers should theoretically have an easier time working on CUDA or Tensor workload software development by leveraging the combined L1 cache and shared memory. And for one final bit of perspective here for you, the Titan V hosts 21.1 billion transistors. The GTX 1080 Ti runs 12 billion, and the previous Pascal predecessor to the V100, the GP100, runs 15.3 billion transistors. So, the increase in transistor count is noteworthy, as is presumably the increase in performance in targeted workloads like machine learning and deep learning, hence the tensor integration with Volta. We'll have more information on all of this as we get more. This is a brand new announcement. We weren't even embargoed on it. So I'm learning this as fast as you are right now. But there's more to learn about Volta, of course, rolling into next year. Otherwise, stay tuned to the channel, subscribe for more so you can catch follow-up coverage. Check the article linked in the description below. We will be updating it if any more information comes out. And patreon.com slash gamersnexus helps out directly or go to store.gamersnexus.net to pick up a shirt like this one if you'd rather support us there. Thank you for watching. I'll see you all next time.